Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to On the Horizon. My name is Sarah Erkinen, and I serve as Assistant Vice President for Institutional Advancement here at Augsburg. Today, we will hear from President Pribinow and also from Alumni Board President Lori Higgins. There will be a time for questions and discussion, and actually, we're planning a little bit of small group conversation a little bit later, too. Um, today's event is being recorded and closed captioning is available. Thanks again for being here. And now I think Lori Higgins is gonna say a few words. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you everyone for being here today. I know what a beautiful afternoon it is out today. So the fact that you are here with us means a lot. So um, I'm really excited to hear from President Pribinow in just a moment about what's happening at Augsburg. And, you know, I think one of the goals of today is just to stay connected through sharing information and some shared dialogue. And I'm really excited uh, for that discussion we're going to have later on. So before I turn it over to President Pribinow, I was asked to just share a reflection I have from being on the board. And, you know, I thought a lot about that. Obviously, we could talk a lot about last year. Um, but honestly, the, the time that I've had on the board I think a lot of us are called to serve on the board because we were instilled in that sense of service when we were at Augsburg and, and servant leadership. And so when people join the board, we ask them to serve with their, their time, their talent and or their treasure, what, whatever works for them. And so we're all here for this sense of, of giving. But to be honest with you, what I have received back from Augsburg during my time on the board, I, I feel like I've received more back than I've than I've given because not only am I able to stay connected with um, Augsburg, which I just feel so so close to, getting to know so many other people with whom I never would have crossed paths, uh, alumni who have, were in classes before me, after me, different perspectives uh, in athletics and step up, whatever it may be, just experiences I never would have known about. I mean, that I've truly treasured over the years. And so um, thank you to Augsburg for allowing me to serve on the board and, and in the chair capacity right now. I just I'm, feel very blessed to have that opportunity. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to President Pribinow to share some information on current and future planning. President Pribinow. Thanks so much, Laurie, and thanks uh, for your service and for those good reflections. Um, I've got a few slides here to share with you, but it's just fun to see uh, some folks that I haven't seen in person for a long time, but uh, even to see you here on this virtual call. And we've started this series of On the Horizon events again, kind of a year after we started the first round, and we found it to be a very helpful way to stay connected even in the midst of a pandemic. So I'm glad to be able to restart this. I also wanna thank uh, those of you who were scheduled to be with us a couple of weeks ago. Of course, our last session was scheduled on the same day that the uh, Chauvin trial verdict came through. So uh, it was uh, very appropriate for us to postpone but we're glad to be able to get back together with all of you. So uh, thanks for being here. So we always start with this uh, beautiful picture um, of the Hagford Center. And um, that of course is uh, right behind the We Are Called is where the alumni board would normally be having their meetings, <laughs> you know, in that uh, Hagford's 150. And I, I see my friend uh, Mike Good is on the call. And of course we were partners in crime and all the fundraising that went in to make this building happen. But I was in there yesterday. Um, and uh, having a cup of coffee with a friend and sitting in the beautiful Gundale Chapel and, um, and was reflecting on what a uh, just so strange uh, the year, the time I've been on campus and you know, which has really just been um, so odd to think about a beautiful building like this, which just had no activity really going on and just to feel um, uh, even though we may save on the de depreciation costs in the long term, um, it wasn't right. Um, you know, and I, I think there's something, uh, especially for Augsburg, in terms of our sense of community that uh, that uh, has been missing this past year. And I, I think as much as we've learned to use technology and found other ways to stay connected, we know that we long for returning to um, to what really makes Augsburg special, and and, uh, and and that is that sense of community. So we'll look forward to when we can be back together with you uh, in person. So let me uh, start by uh, sharing uh, this next slide, which um, kind of frames the way that um, uh, we think about uh, what we've been through going back 15 months, what we've been through this past year now, and what we're planning for as we go forward. So, so as you know, uh, about 14 months ago, um, right at spring break uh, in 2020, we had to make the difficult decision to completely pivot. We sent our students home, we moved everything online, um, and everything was focused in those final uh, weeks of the spring term on helping our students be successful, and we were. We, we, we 
uh, made it through and we graduated them and we put together a virtual commencement that we were able to uh, get out uh, sometime early in June. But even as that was going on, uh, we were beginning the really deep work that had to be done on campus to think about what was gonna happen uh, for last fall. And, and that work, I just wanna commend uh, our faculty and staff, uh, our student government that just stepped up and, and then really helped us to constantly be mindful of both what was happening in the kind of wider landscape in terms of the pandemic and how we needed to respond to the public health concerns and the like. Uh, and then of course the layering on of the George Floyd murder, which just really, uh, you can imagine the impact on the Augsburg community and on our neighborhood. But I'm so proud of how folks um, zeroed in on, on the needs of our students and how we were gonna start that year um, uh, as successfully as we could, even in that different format that we're gonna have. So about 90% of our classes uh, in the fall were, uh, were virtual in some fashion. We did have some classes person to person, um, uh, in person, there's some labs and some exercise science classes. Um, we, of course, were able to start um, uh, some athletic practices, even though we were not gonna have a season. Uh, our teams were allowed to practice a, a good number of days actually throughout the year, which helped to keep those teams together and to, and to keep those students engaged. Um, uh, we had a, a okay year when it came to the pandemic. We were very mindful of uh, zeroing in on any outbreak. Um, we certainly had a few, but for the most part, we kept everything in low transmission. Um, and then we did some special things that really uh, uh, changed um, uh, in some ways that was a response to what we were missing. We, we used outdoor spaces better. We, uh, we found ways to uh, bring uh, students together uh, in safe ways, but in kind of smaller groups. So that was the one way we could do it. Um, we also, um, um, of course, uh, as you many of you saw, we put together a kind of wonderful 31 minute uh, Advent Vespers virtually that was uh, beautiful in its own way, but just to think about the creativity that went into that and the imagination and the, uh, really the resilience of our folks throughout the year. So now we've finished our 151st academic year um, and um, we have uh, had a virtual commencement already a week ago Monday. We um, graduated another 850 or so um, Augies out into the world. Um, uh, it is the case that we will be doing an in-person um, commencement ceremony for both the class of 2020 and class of 2021 on June 8th at US Bank Stadium because when the um, uh, governor's rules here in Minnesota changed just uh, last week, we were able to um, actually increase the number of people that can come together. So we will have um, that ceremony and uh, our graduates can bring up to 10 guests with them. And so uh, I imagine that we will uh, spread out a little bit more than we would normally do, but we will have that ceremony here on June 8th. Um, but even as uh, we, of course, are finishing this year and, um, and celebrating the successes, even as we um, know how exhausting it's been for folks, we've also been thinking about what next year means. And, and of course, that's a moving target at the moment. As many of you know, especially those of you who are here in Minnesota with the governor's uh, change on, um, on the, the need for masking and social distancing uh, after July 1, the, some of the opening up of capacities, we've constantly been having to rethink what that's gonna mean for us going into the fall. So uh, the principle for us though, that underlies what we're really planning for the fall is that we do need to get back to a much more robust in-person experience for our students. And so we're thinking through how to do that safely. Um, we're certainly looking at questions of vaccines, of course, continued testing as we need to do that, uh, but really looking at how we can take what we've learned um, and there are some things that certainly will change even if we go back to a more normal uh, on-campus experience, but also to think about how we come back to, um, to really the heart of what makes uh, Augsburg uh, really a special place. And we're thinking about next year really as an on-ramp, um, knowing that uh, we won't be completely back to normal, but an on-ramp to what um, we are calling sustainable growth. Um, and that's, um, that's an important concept, and I, I want to go to the next slide just to remind you. I think most of the people on this call um, have seen this one-page uh, summary of our uh, Augsburg 150, the sesquicentennial strategic plan. And I've spent a lot of time with colleagues from other institutions over the past, uh, you know, 15 months, uh, sharing best practices of, uh, you know, talking about the challenges we faced uh, in common. But many of them, of course. Um, have had to give up on their strategic plans because they had to focus just on uh, what had to happen on the ground and they didn't have a plan that really framed that work. And what I'm really proud of is to, uh, to know that Augsburg, um, this plan, which was adopted by the Board of Regents and, and worked on for two years before that by our entire community, has really framed our work and given us um, uh, a work to be done that could be done in a pandemic that now actually sets the foundation for where we're going. Um, and I, I, in particular, this vision statement um, uh, as a new kind of urban student 
student-centered university, educating Augsburg students as stewards of an inclusive democracy. And then this amazing phrase, engaged in their communities and uniquely equipped to navigate the complex issues of our time. So think about that. I mean, what, what more set of complex issues could we imagine in the world? Public health crises, economic disruptions, uh, racial unrest, all of these issues which we're sending our students out into, but we're also leaning into them as an institution and thinking about how we model as an institution how to live uh, into those complex issues, but also to educate our students so that they uh, will be prepared to go into the world as generations of Augies have gone into the world and responded to the challenges that are in front of us. Uh, Throughout this uh, year, though, we decided to focus on, uh, we were doing work across the entire plan, but in particular focus on what is the third of the strategies that are listed. That is what it means to grow as a sustainable university. And that work, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit more in depth about that in a second, but I just have to say that the amount of work, the body of work that's been accomplished by our faculty, staff, and students this year in thinking about what it means to grow as a sustainable university truly positions us to come out of this pandemic uh, with a sense of strength, with a sense of hope, uh, um, with a sense that we've really um, used this time well to think about what that looks like going forward. But before I get there, let me uh, just uh, go to this next slide and, and just highlight a few things from the past year. So this kind of mosaic of, of pictures gives you uh, just a glimpse of some of the things that were going on in campus. Starting last summer, we're uh, in that upper left uh, corner there where I a bunch of us faculty staff were out delivering signs to incoming students because of course we did all of our summer orientations virtually but we wanted to have that personal contact so we got in our cars and we drove all over the twin cities the region and delivered these signs these yard signs and that happened to be one of the students that i met along the way but just a wonderful way of making that initial connection there were, of course, offices, as you see, the enrollment services office that were open throughout the year. We did have staff on campus throughout the year, providing especially the face-to-face -face services for students. Um, uh, we did have, we had 750 students living on campus in the fall. Um, that number went down to about 600 uh, in the spring semester, but still, uh, you know, a robust number um, that, that needed to know that the services like uh, financial aid and, you know, of course, the res residence halls and the um, uh, dining services and those kinds of things were still available. Um, of course, you see in the kind of middle set of pictures, many of our students involved in the protests across the uh, across the Twin Cities, really standing up for uh, justice and for their neighbors uh, in so many ways uh, uh, that uh, justice, the uh, long delayed is justice denied, denied is actually a, um, a banner that was created for Augsburg uh, in the spring semester last uh, in 2020 that then ended up being taken out into the community and used as a banner as part of the protests. We were very pleased to be able to uh, get our student athletes back as we uh, as I noted they were able to practice we had uh, shortened seasons for uh, winter sports we then had uh, very short seasons for some of the uh, for the, some of the fall sports, but we had them in April. <laughs> and so I have to say that I woke up in the morning and opened up my Star Tribune and, you know, it was shocking on the second week in April to be seeing a football score or seeing a soccer score, of course, because those would normally uh, be happening in the fall. But it, we made a promise to our students that they would have an opportunity to compete, and they did. One good news that the NCAA has basically said this year doesn't count toward eligibility. So our students, even though they did get to practice and compete, will not lose that year of eligibility. And for many of them, that means they will be able to come back and, and have a more full experience uh, next year. Um, uh, some of the, the lower left there, the, some of the work that was happening with art making out in the quad, again, using outdoor spaces. And I just want to highlight um, uh, the woman behind the face shield there. That's Dr. Alicia Quella who's the head of our PA program, but she's also an epidemiologist, so a PhD. Um, and she became our primary guide to this year. And she just did remarkable work in helping to keep us safe, helping us to think through uh, both the public health guidelines, the science, uh, helping us to think about testing and now uh, vaccines. And so it's just um, really a gift to us to have someone on our faculty who was able to step up. And in fact, just today, she did a very important session with our faculty talking about the state of vaccines and, and how to think about that going forward. So, so just, um, just think to be reminded that um, through even this difficult year, um, Augsburg um, had to, you know, really with a sense of, again, kind of imagination and, and resilience, a, a way of uh, trying to stay connected to our students and keep focused on our mission. So let's go to the next slide then and um, talk a little bit about, I've got to come back to this. I always come back to the plan. Uh, we've got this slide in here just to remind you again that, um, uh, that we have some very clear 
uh, pathways here that we are working on strengthening our three-dimensional education, which we're actually going to talk about a little bit at the end of this session, and then advancing the public purposes of an Augsburg education, and then finally, growing as a sustainable university. So maybe a quick update on the next slide um, to, um, uh, to what it means to grow as a sustainable university. And these, um, uh, this was a group of board members, uh, faculty, and staff that started meeting uh, in November and met every other week up until the end of April and then brought up a, uh, a um, um, report, a set of recommendations to the Board of Regents at their meeting at the end of April. And uh, what they focused on then after looking at a lot of background material was these four key action areas. So what it means to enhance our distinction as an inclusive institution of choice for undergrads, what it means to improve undergraduate retention, that is students who start with us and finish with us, what it means to grow and um, think about our graduate programs, how we can optimize graduate enrollment, and then some really interesting work on how we revitalize our offerings for working adults. Um, and um, this has been really fascinating because this is uh, something that's actually been informed by what, how we've used technology during the pandemic. So can we think about adult learning, working adult learning that's unbounded by geography, by modality, or by degree option. And, and if you think about um, this past year, I mean, we had students taking classes with us who were in Texas or California or you know around the world. So we've been able to show that it's possible for, for our students to be connected to us through the use of technology in a way that can still be successful. So how will we take those lessons and help to think about creating uh, programs that are gonna be compelling for adult uh, working adults in particular. So, so those four areas then became the focal point uh, for a set of recommendations and then actually a set of initiatives that are tied to each of these action areas that uh, we are in fact right at the moment um, uh, starting to work on some of them already. We've made some investments uh, in some of those areas including a quite extensive market study that's linked to that first, uh, that first bullet point um, trying to understand how our of uh, commitment to equity and uh, inclusion has actually shaped our reputation in such a way that we have become an institution of choice and trying to understand um, how to even be more clear about how we talk about that and how we share that message uh, with prospective students. So let's go to the next slide. Um, I want to talk about this is another uh, one of the initiatives that was undertaken this year. I think you all remember that uh, back um, I don't know, um, was it three years ago when we changed our name to Augsburg University? And, and we made the case at that point that, um, that the name was more of a marketing decision um, because in fact we needed to compete with all of our sister schools, most of whom had already uh, changed their name uh, to university. But that at the same time, we knew it was gonna be important to then think about the structural questions behind the change to university. How do we, how do we respond to the fact that we've become this complex set of, of different kinds of academic programs and uh, students of different uh, you know, levels of bachelors and undergrad, but also lots of graduate programs and uh, now of course uh, two doctoral programs. So um, Provost Kaivola uh, had led a, um, a group of faculty over the past two years and they brought forward this recommendation both to the faculty and to the board um, in, um, in April. And so we will now be working on a plan to implement this where we will move to what is called a two college model um, under the university. So there would be a college of art and science and a college of professional studies. And this then, um, allows us to, uh, to work on what are, the, uh, what are the divisions under each of these? Uh, uh, are there potential schools here that could be created, for example, and, and might be um, of interest to a donor um, to think about creating a, a, you know, a, a school of music, a school of, of, of health professions, a you know, school of business? You could just think about the options that might be then available kind of under this model. Um, but I think most important, this wasn't just about getting uh, you know, structure uh, messed up. I mean, we promised Folks, we would not add a lot of new deans. <laughs> you know, that was one of the concerns, of course, of the faculty that we we're going to add a lot of more administration. But the key here was to make sure that um, that the decisions that need to be made uh, made about academic programs are being made by people who are closer to the ground and have the expertise. And I think our our one college model that we've uh, have, you know had for years and years was appropriate if you went back to the you know to the 70s and 80s. But in fact, it was not serving our needs as we moved into this new era with the range of programs we have. So you'll hear more about this uh, in the uh, in the months ahead. But uh, very excited. I think this is a, a exactly the way to go, and and we look forward to uh, being able to roll this out uh, and uh, and likely have a, it in place probably by the fall of 2022. So let's go to the next slide and look at um, some statistics from our um, 
our enrollment. And this is um, really exciting news for us. We, um, as you know, two years ago, 2019, the fall of 2019, we welcomed the largest class, entering class, undergraduate class in Augsburg's history. Um, and that was um, about 636 students. Um, and then last fall, even in the midst of the pandemic, we offered, uh, or we welcomed rather the second largest entering class in Augsburg's history, about 550. Um, and, um, you know, you, after two times through and those kind of records, you think, well, we're on a, we're on a trend. And, and the truth is we are on a trend. And you start to look here at um, um, the number of uh, applications we have. So this is as of, uh, this is kind of early data, but back in uh, April sometime, but just look at the comparison between 2021 and 2020. Uh, 2020, you had about, uh, what, 1,800 applications total. Uh, in 2021, we're looking at 2,500. Um, so we have seen a huge uptick in the number of applications. Um, and that, of course, then creates that pool from which you then work toward um, actually uh, yielding your incoming class. And we can go to the next slide. I think we've got uh, up-to-date data. Oh, this is not up-to-date, but um, what I can tell you um, is that, in fact, um, this, uh, our numbers as of uh, Monday of this week um, are actually running about 60 deposits ahead of last year to date. So if last year was the second largest class in our history, um, it looks to, to us like we will come in about 600 first year students, um, and then we will have about 160 or 170 uh, transfer students in addition. So, so I just, I, you know, those of you who are in sales, uh, I'm sure there's some folks who are on sales, think about this. In the middle of a pandemic, an enrollment staff, that, an admission staff that primarily is about trying to, you know, work on building relationships and convincing students to apply and then, of course, to go through the process of being accepted and, and to matriculate and to see the success they've had this year where we will likely have the second largest class in Augsburg's history again. And we, what we've done really now over three years then is, is just bump up um, what is our kind of uh, working number for the total of students that we have on campus. So uh, just four or five years ago, that number would have been 1900, 1950 you know, uh, undergrads. Now that number is gonna be more like 2200 or 2250. Um, and that, that I think we've got capacity for that. That's the good news. And um, we just, um, we're bucking the trends to be quite honest. We are um, outflanking many of our competition and we, uh, I think those of us on this call know that uh, Augsburg always deserved <laughs> to, to have that uh, kind of result. And what we're seeing now is actually we're living in to those good to those good results because of our reputation and because of what we do for students on campus. So let's go to the next slide. And um, I always like to say a little bit about um, about philanthropy before we um, open it up for questions. This. Um, uh, has been an amazing year again for for fundraising. Uh, as you know, we're in a, a, a campaign that started back before the sesquicentennial year, the Great Returns campaign that's being chaired by Dr. Paul Mueller. And uh, uh, our donors uh, have been just remarkably generous. Um, so we have now reached uh, 100 new endowed scholarships during uh, this uh, during this. Uh, campaign. Um, one of the things I've been most proud of is to think about the ways in which donors have responded to the highest priorities we have. If you think about this past year, uh, again, some of the economic challenges our students had, for them to be able to uh, have access to student emergency funds, um, some of the critical race ethnic, ethnic studies program that we've been started getting scholarships specifically for students in that program. Um, uh, there's a this presidential strategic fund that was created um, uh, to help give me some discretion over things that I can fund has raised almost a half million dollars. And so it's giving us uh, opportunity to respond to the most pressing um, needs that perhaps cannot be covered necessarily out of operations. Um, of course, our give to the max, we continue to just rule a give to the max in terms of higher education. You know, as you see there, 41 projects that raise over $530,000. Um, it's just been a wonderful example of how uh, the Augsburg community, it's not just the advancement office out there asking folks to support us, but it's actually 41 different groups of individuals, departments, uh, athletic teams, uh, special programs that, that, that reach out to their folks um, that put, believe in them and then raise that money in aggregate. We come in with uh, more than four hundred or $530,000. And then some of the special ways are a wonderful Augsburg Women Engaged Group, which has um, focused their efforts this past year on food insecurity, both on campus and off campus. So they help to um, 
uh, do a food drive. I remember last summer for uh, some of our neighbors at the Brian Coyle Center, but they also have now been focusing on raising support for the campus cupboard, which is our on-campus food pantry for students. Um, and I know it's hard uh, to uh, to truly grasp that for those of us perhaps who have not uh, been on campus or been on in college for a long time, but our students uh, come to us and they um, they have food insecurity. Some of them have housing insecurity, and so for us to be able as a as an institution to be able to respond to those needs helps them to keep their eye on their studies and not have to worry about uh, where their next meal is going to come from. So very very proud of. Uh, again, uh, what we've been able to see in terms of uh, results. We um, are nearing $66 million raised in this great returns campaign. And that, of course, is uh, by $10 million, so the largest uh, capital campaign in Augsburg's history. And we're not done yet. Uh, in fact, you're going to hear more over the next several months about what we're hoping to do to really um, reach, reach high for a, a quite significant goal uh, to finish off this campaign over the next couple, three years. So. Um, Next slide. Oh, that's the end of this, my formal report, but I, I want very much to, uh, uh, to uh, hear your questions, things that you'd like to know more about. I know we've got a couple board members on here, former board members, uh, certainly a good, a good number of alumni board folks, and I'm happy to respond to whatever you'd like to hear about. While people are thinking of their questions, um, Paul, maybe you can answer what seems to be the number one question we get asked, which is uh, about vaccinations in the fall and will they be required of students and staff, faculty? Yeah, yeah, it's a hot issue. Um, in fact, we spent an hour today with the faculty um, listening to their thoughts about it. And uh, we spent uh, 45 minutes with the Board of Regents 10 days ago with their thoughts on it. And what I can tell you is that in every one of those rooms, there, there's opinions on both ends, and they all look at me like, you know, good luck with that decision. <laughs> so, um, uh, so I, uh, not to make light. I mean, uh, this is important. I, when we think about um, about the virus, um, uh, we of course believe deeply that folks need to be vaccinated, and we are doing everything in our power to make vaccinations available um, uh, to our students, to our faculty, to our staff. And we've had great good fortune there. We have a great relationship with the um, People Center um, across the street from Augsburg, and they've been doing clinics. We've been doing clinics at the Central Lutheran Church. Um, our folks uh, at, on campus have access to the fairgrounds, the federal site that was set up at the fairgrounds because of our neighborhood. Um, and so all of that is, is part of our efforts to make sure that we keep making it accessible to folks. Um, I think that um, when I look at kind of where we're going to be in the fall, especially given what the governor has now, um, you know, said about kind of undoing some of the public health guidelines. Um, we look at what what we need, what are the tools we have to keep ourselves and each other safe. Um, and so um, I look at that in kind of three categories. So the vaccine is certainly the leading example right now, I think, of what we can do. We also, of course, testing throughout this past year. That was how we kept each other safe. We did regular testing. Um, our, our student athletes were tested three times a week. Um, they got 6 a.m. Monday. Wednesday, Friday, they had to go over to Melby and get tested just to make sure that they could continue to participate. Uh, so we know testing works. It's a way that we can keep track of uh, folks and we can catch uh, an outbreak before it takes off. And then, of course, there are the mitigation things that include um, uh, masks and social distancing. And so I look at how we think about the, the mix of those three things. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't personally don't see Augsburg as a kind of mandating kind of place. It's just not in our culture. Um, and there are issues about um, some of the history of medical trauma for communities of color in particular that I'm paying attention to. Um, there are some legal issues around uh, vaccines that haven't received full authorization yet that you have to pay attention to. So, so we haven't made a decision yet. Uh, but at, in the meantime, we are doing everything in our power to encourage and to make vaccines available. And that I think is the right strategy in the short term. So for example, we're gonna run um, a clinic for, um, or a vaccine clinic for our prospective incoming students in June when they come to campus for their summer orientations. So right there, we'll have a chance to say to students, it's important that you be vaccinated. And so here's, um, here's an opportunity to go ahead and do that right here on campus as you're here um, for your orientation. So everything we can do to get that number, um, that percentage up uh, before we get uh, back together in the fall is going to be important. The good news is that Hennepin County, uh, for those of you who are not here, um, 
Hennepin County is doing quite well. Um, we're actually up over 70% in Hennepin County already of everyone at least having one shot. And so knowing where we are in the middle of May, um, that number is like only gonna continue to tick up. So in some ways we start from a different base too in terms of at least the majority of our students coming from areas where they're doing quite well with the vaccine. So. Um, President Criminal, um, can you share um, an update of where we are with the financial um, from the federal government for the Oxford University? Yeah, I sure can. That's a, I have to say that that has been a, um, a wonderful, um, uh, you know, I mean, Augsburg has always gotten federal financial aid, but you know, otherwise, uh, except when Martin Sable was there and got us all those earmarks, uh, we haven't actually had a lot of regular support from. Uh, um, so I think folks recognize that there have been three rounds of recovery funds. So we go way back to last uh, last spring and the CARES Act, um, which um, uh, Augsburg, it's a, there's a formula for what colleges and universities get, and it's actually uh, biased toward colleges that serve more Pell eligible students. And so we actually, um, of course, have a high number of Pell eligible students. So we received uh, at that point 3.2 million in the first round. Um, half of that went directly to students for emergency needs, and then the other half went uh, to institutional needs. So that really helped us last spring to finish 2020 because we had to refund all of the um, uh, housing uh, contracts and all kinds of other expenses that we had. Then if you fast forward to uh, December um, in what's called HERF, uh, HERF 1, I think <laughs> they call it, um, that, um, that was a more significant amount um, of money um, and Augsburg received in total almost $5 million. Um, and in that case, 1.6 million of that, the same amount we had in the CARES Act, had to go directly to students. So then we again were able to respond to emergency needs, but 3.2 or 3.3 million of it was available for institutional needs. So that, to be quite honest, that is helping us then be, come out of this year whole, out of this fiscal year whole, which our fiscal year ends here in a couple weeks at the end of May. So, so we have that. And then we have HERF 2, which was the, uh, the Act, American Rescue Act, um, of course, included additional funding for higher ed and was an even higher amount. Um, and so Augsburg received, um, um, in fact, the official numbers just came out yesterday, um, $8.8 .8 million. Um, 4.4 million of which goes to students. Um, and so we're gonna be able to offer students support through the summer into the fall. Uh, those who are having trouble uh, because of family situations or whatever have emergency needs, but also to be able to pay their tuition bills or whatever uh, residence life bills. And then the other 4.4 million that is available for us for, um, for institutional needs, either lost revenue or extra expenses. And of course we've had both. Um, so if you think about it, our just to give you a quick data point, I mean, we would normally have a thousand students living in the residence halls. So we had 750 and then 600. So you can just, you can do the math that that's a pretty significant loss of revenue. Of course, for most of the year, we had to cut down uh, very significantly on the amount of auxiliary revenue because we did not have uh, you know catering and we didn't have the kind of events going on. We were able to get our ice rinks open that helped and the dome stayed up as many of you probably saw with dome stayed up for uh, up until just a, a month or so ago. And so that allowed us to rent that space. But for big chunks of the year, we weren't able to do that. So so overall, um, about 16 million uh, total from the feds for, for Augsburg. Um, and that the way it came to us, it's really allowing us, and this kind of goes back to my first slide, to think about those three years and how, in fact, um, uh, that each chunk of that money has helped us to weather one of those years. So three different years. And so, and for next year, we really, um, our budget projections right now show us again, um, coming out of the year whole. So, so, um, so thanks for asking about that, Dennis, but that's, uh, we give thanks for all of that because it really made a huge difference for us and for a lot of our sister institutions. So. I think there's a question here, Paul, about um, working with doing remote education with inmates. Um, it sounds like Mitchell Hanlon has done, has just proctored the LSAT for prison inmates and have we thought at all about that? Yeah, uh, we haven't thought specifically about the use of the remote, but uh, we have been actively involved, actually going back to the early 70s in, um, in doing um, uh, college in the, in the prisons. Uh, and so that's an interesting question. I, I should check on that because that certainly would be, um, we're part of an effort that the state has put together now that's really expanding. Um, Governor Walls uh, has a particular focus on this question. And so uh, it would be interesting to think about whether, um, again, the use of technology could help to expand um, some of those, uh, some of the programming that we do in the prison. So um, don't 
don't have any specifics off the top of my head, but it's a good it's a good point. Anybody Any else? Questions? Question, you wanna... So, Paul, I have a question. Um, I say I'm a student in Texas uh, going online with Augsburg, and then there's a student on campus. So, if I am in Texas online, is my tuition any lower? It is not. Um, you know, and that that was more of an issue um, last spring than it ended up being this year because, because at the end of the day, um, you know our costs didn't change uh, overall um, and the degree they were going to receive is the same degree they would have received if they were doing on campus and 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 i think that uh i, I certainly understood some of the you know the experiential pieces that were missing that folks feel are part of the college especially the college the undergrad experience um but in fact um we we did not know i will say we did not increase our tuition uh this year in response to some of the economic challenges and we also, uh, because we made that decision late, we did not change their financial aid um, awards. So they actually got more financial aid for a tuition rate that was lower than what we originally had thought it was going to be. So, so in that way, there, there was some savings for students uh, built into that model. We will have a, an increase um, this year um, uh, with uh, the going into the second rate is 2.75% increase or something for the undergraduate tuition. So, um, but, um, but no, we did not have a, a we're not like the airlines where, you know, depending on what seat you're in, you, you pay a different <laughs> amount of money. So. So. And going forward, uh, when you're back full steam on campus, how many online students do you think you'll have? Well, I don't think, um, I don't think we're in a situation where we will have a separate program that's for online students. I think we will have courses and maybe in time programs that are more online so um and we've actually been experimenting with some of this already especially at the graduate level with uh, these hybrid programs they're you know they're called um, uh, low residency programs so for example our mfa program um in creative writing it um uh it uh, comes they come to campus for two weeks in the summer and they do everything else throughout the year online um and so i think you know i i like that model because i think we, we want people to know the, the place that they're getting their degree from and uh, and that has you know that little bit of time on campus for a couple of years helps the students to make that connection um i think we will increase the number of online courses that we offer just in the catalog um, which then will be available to those um, you know who may want whether they're degree seeking they may just want to take a course here or there um, um and i we i it would be interesting at some point for us to have you talk some faculty members because there are a lot of faculty members who you know Augsburg's never been big on on moving to online but their experience this year um with a lot of support from our it folks and from our you know, e-learning folks they've actually many of them learned to really see what they can do online in very creative ways and, and people who would have just shunned it they are saying well i i well, this is great i'd like to keep doing some of this so we may see an ex because of that an expansion in the number of courses so um yeah Let's see, all school reunion. Yeah, that topic just came up today. Amanda's asking a question. Um, we were gonna do an all school reunion um, last fall, <laughs> um, uh, but and that was supposed to be the end of our sesquicentennial celebration. In fact, we just had a conversation today. I think we're gonna start planning uh, with the possibility of doing it in the fall of 2022. So that's what uh, we decided at least as a first kind of planning step today. So we'll, we'll keep you up to date on that because uh, I still feel like we need to finish our sesquicentennial celebration. You know, if you think about what happened last spring, we lost that momentum on that we had built all year. We had all these projects that people had worked all year on that basically didn't get seen, including you know musical productions and concerts and uh, you know, books that people put together. And so I really want to get back and and have that celebration um, and likely um, you know, to be able to do it safely, we'll probably have to wait to the fall of 2022. So, um, yeah. Yeah, good idea, Lori. Yeah. I got a lot of requests about letting alums sit in on classes and things, so. <laughs> well, are folks up for uh, no other uh, cost-benefit analysis to weigh pros and cons implementing virtual degrees? Um, I don't think there probably has been yet. Um, Matthew, I think that's a great question. Um, again, you know, part of this is to think about where does online education 
fit in in what Augsburg is known for, uh, you know, and I mean, we can expand online education as, you know, again, we did it because we had to this year. But if you think about, um, you know, a more significant presence in that market, um, in that market space, um, there are a lot of players out there that have a lot more experience than we do um, and have figured out a business model that, to be quite honest, counts on paying people a lot less to teach courses than we do. Um, and so you you go to a Capella, you go to a Walden, um, you go to a Phoenix. Uh, you know they've figured out how to do that. Now that doesn't mean that there aren't pockets of programming, academic programs, where it would make sense to look at some of those questions. It could certainly expand our reach. I mean, if you think about that, if you were offering an online, our, our MFA students come from all over the country because they only have to come here for two weeks in the summer. So that would allow us to take, especially some of our really signature programs like our um, like our masters in music therapy, for example, it's the number one program in the country right now. Um, and so students right now have to move to Minneapolis to take that program. So what could we do to um, uh, to uh, really enhance the reach of some of those special programs? Um, so um, Advent Vespers, yeah, it was it was a, uh, amazing what they put together for that. Um, uh, we pretty much have decided that uh, Advent Vespers will be virtual again this year. Um, now, I think it will be different than last year um, because our choirs will likely be vaccinated and they likely will be able to at least perform, you know, in spaces where they uh, we can videotape them as opposed to the Zoom versions that you had to, that we watched, um, which were inventive, I have to say. I was impressed by what people did. But um, so what we're thinking about is can we Get our choirs into the into the central Lutheran space and um, and have them videotape there and then put together uh, you know a, a virtual version that includes some of the things that we've come to really value about Advent Vespers. Um, I the the issue there, of course, is are people going to be comfortable to be in a tight space in the middle of the winter with 2,500 other people? You know. Uh, and that I think right now our folks are really thinking that uh, that would be a risk for us to go ahead and plan for something in person. Um, and, uh, and and of course the planning for that has to start now because it, it leads up uh, over six months to, uh, to early early December. So, but right now at least the latest I've heard is that likely we will be virtual for one more year. Um, so. Well, it's um. 445, and I don't know how many folks, I've got about 20 folks on here. And what we talked about uh, was um, uh, having you just uh, spend a few minutes together, maybe in a little smaller group so that you can actually see each other face-to-face uh, -to, -face, um, to, to reflect on another aspect of the plan, which I kind of uh, glossed over, which is this concept of what we call our three-dimensional education. Uh, you've probably heard me talk about this before, where we believe that what Augsburg does is uh, educate students to make a living, to make a life, uh, and then to build community. Um, and what we thought, especially with this group of um, alumni leaders and others, um, uh, we'd love to hear you, um, what you think about this framework you think you're talking about, and maybe your own examples of how Augsburg helped you to think about how those pieces are, again, we don't see those as separate. I mean, they're actually, they're, they're combined in what we do for students uh, as we send them out into the world. So, so I think through the magic of breakout rooms, you're gonna be sent off for, um, uh, with, three or four other folks. Um, and I think for 10 minutes, just a chance to uh, have a quick conversation about whether this framework makes any sense to you and maybe some examples of that. And then we'll bring you back uh, uh, at about five to five, just uh, central time here, just to uh, maybe get a few closing thoughts from you on based on what you, what you were able to talk about. So, um, so whoever has the magic button, please uh, go ahead.
that wasn't enough time. I wish I could visit with everybody. Yeah, we're, we were the, our group was the best looking group. <laughs> <laughs> EJ, can we take a, a stop sharing the slides? Maybe well, we can except for one. Yeah, we'll yeah. decide who that was. <laughs> There we go. Now we can see everybody. So, um, well, were there any? Uh, we don't have a lot of time, but any uh, epiphanies? You know, any uh, any great stories that folks uh, have time for maybe one or two to to share out? If anybody wanted to step up, so um, I can share. I talked a little bit in our group that I really liked that this takes a new spin and maybe helps. Um, provide a little more clarity on the term vocation that we've been using for a while, because I really struggled with that in my time at Augsburg, um, especially since, you know, my degree is in accounting and I work in a corporation. And I think there were times where there was this interpretation that vocation was kind of the non-corporate space of things. So I think I liked that this is, you know, acknowledging like part of coming to college is to learn how to make a living, right? But then in how to, you know, how do you set yourself up for success in the world, but then also finding your passions that maybe aren't just in your work, but in other things you do in your life. And so um, that was part of my big, like I was an advocate for that type of thinking around vocation when I was a student. So I like that this kind of takes that terminology and provides that context. That's, that's wonderful, Lauren, thank you. That's very helpful, yeah. Well, one of the things that I uh, mentioned to our group was that um, the, the make a living, make a life, build a community uh, definitely resonates uh, with me. And, and, I, and I think even though it wasn't articulated 50 years ago, I think that the culture was such that uh, it really was um, uh, all about that. But I, I was saying, you know, to Shelby and Heather that I, I think part of what's important in in saying it is that it becomes an affirmation of what we're about and people then internalize it and it becomes a mindset and and uh, and I I do believe that you know my grandson coming out of there graduating going across the platform at the stadium on June 8th understands that it's more about not just making a living, that he has learned how to make a life for himself that he wants to live. And part of that is in, in building community wherever he's at. So, yeah. yeah, he certainly, uh, he did live it out while he was on campus. I still did remember him, those admin festivals, you know, lifting up those liturgical pieces and leading a group of football players to <laughs> kind, of, kind of ring in the season. So that was wonderful, yeah. Well, that's great. Well, I know that we're, um, I, you know, again, we're gonna have lots of conversation about this. This will probably be the focal point and I, uh, you know, if, uh, as we now move out of the growth sustainably work and have a chance to really zero in on what this means. But it, uh, but I think you're right, Mike. And, uh, you know, um, this is a way of trying to capture in a, a new way what I think is at the heart. Of, it's really what Lori talked about at the beginning. I mean, her experience of Augsburg, um, you know, she she named all those aspects. I mean, she's got a good job. <laughs> you know, she clearly well, has. You know, she's uh, involved in lots of different community things, and she she found the commitment to service, uh, you know, to be so, really central to what she does in the world. So, so thanks for that. I before we close, I just want to say um, it's such a wonderful group of folks here um, on the screen. Um, uh, you know, one of the things I've been wanting to say to folks as we close this year is that um, I have been so grateful um, for the fact that, um, uh, of course, you've been financially supportive, which we appreciate, but, but even more, um, your level of concern for what's happening at Augsburg that you've expressed in various ways, your prayers, your support, it's meant all the, all the difference to us because this has been, um, uh, in some ways, a really, really difficult year on lots of different levels, and for all of us, but certainly um, for our community. And, and you know, people are have been anxious, and they've been uh, you know fearful, and they've been exhausted, and you know all of these different things that have been a part of the experience. But to know that we have an alumni population in particular that cares deeply about this place and wants to support it, wants to keep it in its prayers, and and to provide that kind of moral support is just so so uh, meaningful so thank you all for that uh, as well and um and i can't wait to be in a room with you sometime soon <laughs> so and to be able to do this face to face so um matthew did you want to have a final word 
Final word, huh? Wow. <laughs> you went yeah. off mute, I thought, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. I just want to say thank you for um, hosting this space and giving us the opportunity to come together for a great conversation. Um, you know, similar to some of the other comments, we talked about vocation uh, in our, you know, small group. And uh, definitely um, Augsburg is, is continuing to make a great impact, and it's great to see that. And I just think as we consider, you know, what the future holds for students, for education, um, and for for vocation, for work, that we continue to be innovative um, so that we can kind of stay at the forefront of things. We're doing some fantastic things in the community, and I thank you for your leadership. Well, thank you, Matthew. I think folks know that I signed this uh, six-year contract renewal, and uh, my joke is that if I didn't retire a year ago, you know, which is probably when I should have retired, you know, not having to live for this year, at least I want six years of fun before I retire. So <laughs> we're hoping yeah. that that'll be the case. So. Exactly. So, thank you all so much. Really great to be with all of you. So uh, take thank care. You. Thanks, Lori, for your leadership.